Hey, good morning, everybody. Today is December 8th, 2023, and I'm going to share five dreams that I had. Um, the first four are dreams that I had a few days back, maybe about three days ago, and I had shared them in a voice note on my WhatsApp to my uh, sisters in Christ. And so uh, rather than me just have to go back and retell them all, I am going to play the re voice note recording uh, to get the, the message out, okay? Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and just read you a little scripture because the first dream, uh, I'm going to explain to you about the yoke in the dream. It has a double uh, meaning. It's a double layered, okay? Uh, the yoke that is in the dream is all is about this person these people being left behind during the great tribulation a yoke can be a burden it can be a yoke placing a yoke on somebody's neck or placing a yoke upon somebody can be um like a burden or a heavy a heaviness but it can uh, but a yoke is also is easy and it is light so I talked about the uh, burden part of it in the video, in the uh, voice note, but I'm going to go ahead and read you scripture because these particular people that were left behind in the great, for the great tribulation, uh, where I was giving them this yoke, is also about uh, Matthew chapter 11, uh, words in red, what Jesus spoke. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Well, actually, I'll just read actually Matthew chapter 8. I mean, Matthew, excuse me, Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 to 20 or 30. Sorry, uh, it's early in the morning. I got to put myself together. Okay, at that time, Jesus answered and said, Now these are words in red I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay, let me play these dreams and I will interject uh, a few things in between, okay? I am in this kitchen. And all of a sudden, everybody's gone in the kitchen except for two children. There's one, there's one child, and then there's another child in another room, and the other child came out of the other room and was looking like, what happened? But I know what happened. Uh, they were left behind. The kids were left behind. The rapture had happened so quick. It was like twinkling of an eye. It was like no noise happened, no nothing. So it's like one second the people were there, like them, like the mom and the smaller child and whoever else was in the kitchen. One minute they were there. I look around. Next second, they're not there. Rick just, just like disappeared with no sound. And there were two children left, like I said. I gave one of the children, the child that was still, the child that was in the kitchen, not the one that was in another room, but the, uh, the one that was in the kitchen, I was make out. I, I had an egg yolk. It was like a, a cooked egg, like a flat egg, not scrambled, but just like a flat egg. But there was no yolk. There, I mean, there was no white to the yolk. There was no white to the egg. All that was there was the yolk. And I had that yolk in my hand, and I said, "Here, you need to eat this. Come on, hurry up, go ahead and eat this." So I was telling the child, and then that other child came out of the room from from the other room. And I said, so are you going to stay with us? And he shook his head, yes. It's like I knew I was going to have to take care of these kids. 
I was going to have to take care of these kids. Giving that child that yoke is a burden. See, the yoke in the Bible is a burden. And um, so these children are going to have to carry this burden of being left behind and going through the Great Tribulation for however long I don't know. But anyway, that's that dream. Okay, so also, like I read the Bible scripture, they will also have to come to Jesus Christ. They will have to eat this yoke also of Jesus Christ and to accept Jesus Christ in their heart. These children were not like five years old or something like that. These children were like around uh, eight, anywhere from eight to ten years old. That's how young these children were. And some of you will not believe that these age of children can be left behind, but I do promise you this, the children of this day and age some of them are exceedingly wicked, wicked children. Uh, uh, I do believe it's, you know, because they were not raised properly. They were not raised to know about Jesus Christ. Uh, they were raised to partake of everything of this world. So um, in, uh, wickedness cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. You must get right with the Lord first. You must accept Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. So let me continue. <coughs> I had another dream. <coughs> Excuse me. You remember the other day where I told you I was at my old house in my dream and the Fran across the street called me Ann? I got called Ann again in my dream. So in this dream, I'm in an, I'm in like um I'm just sitting in another room or something somewhere and I hear, Okay, Ann Jones, it's your you're up next. And so I knew that was me, and I stood up, and I went over to where this, this like, this big, well, it wasn't a massive pool, but it was like a swimming pool. It was one that these swimmers on swim teams, they do laps, and they can dive. So I, I went ahead, and so I started stripping my clothes off, and I was like, oh, my gosh, well, I mean, do I have to take everything off? That I'll be butt naked. I don't want that. And I looked down, and when I took my clothes off, I noticed I had on a swimsuit, a bathing suit. I'm like, oh, okay. So I just stood there. Now it was my turn. I was going to be up. It was going to be my turn. I had to get in the pool. Well, I had to do a dive. I was going to be judged on what I was doing. So I had to dive. I had to do one dive and also swim, a couple, so, you know, like a lap in the pool. I had to swim in the pool. And I even said, I said, I got to make sure I don't have my shoes on. I want to interject here that having those shoes on is standing on hollow ground. Uh, that's the Bible scripture. That's the reference for that. We remove our shoes uh, when we go into hollow ground. Uh, this is jumping in to do God's work. So I, and I didn't have my shoes on. But all these people were kind of like standing in the way. So, um... I was going to need them to move out of the way, but they were all like standing along the edge of the pool. So I would, I was like behind them. So anyway, uh, that was very interesting. And I'm going to send you what the meaning of the name Ann Jones is. Okay. The meaning of the name Ann means grace and God has favored me. The meaning of the name Jones means uh, Jehovah has favored. Okay, that's the meaning of those names. All right, so I say all glory to God. That was very uh, wonderful. All right, now I'm going to um, play t play you the next uh, dreams that I got that on this second voice note. There were these two pastors no 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 excuse me these were two managers of a store they were both drunk i mean they showed up to go to work but they were slap drunk i mean this one guy he was a like he'd say uh jones is a fur name i mean he couldn't even talk it was like slurred speech really bad he was like a really bad drunk couldn't even stand upright, like tottering over. And I went over him and I was being very compassionate and gentle with him. And I was telling him, I'm sorry, you cannot work here. You cannot do this. You cannot show up to work here like this. You can't do it. You know, and he wasn't, he was, he was trying to say, well, I'm okay. I'm like, no, 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 you're not okay. It's not okay how you are. I was being very gentle and loving, compassionate with him. 
um, you know, I, I was really trying to help him out and get him to get out of there and everything like that. Now, the other manager who was there at the store, he was slap drunk. I was, I started, I was not compassionate and all like that with him. I was very firm and stern with him because he was belligerent. He was, he was, um, hmm. no matter what I said, he was just like snippy, snotty, nasty with me. And like, there's nothing wrong with him. And like, basically an attitude like I don't need to be telling him nothing you know he's going to stay there no matter what all this kind of stuff right so um yeah then I think my friend Lisa with me I'm not was with me I'm not sure but could have I, I don't know I think it was Lisa I'm not sure so I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm telling her about these uh oh, excuse me these managers about who they represent, that they actually represent the pastors of churches, you know, like teachers, pastors, their managers, you know, like they manage people like they're so-called shepherds. And I was telling her about how, you know, these guys, they're, they're drunk and, you know, they, they're showing up to work. They're showing up to do the work of the Lord, but they're drunk and they, and they can't do that. You know, it's a spiritual drunkenness. It's not a literal physical drunkenness. It's a it's a spiritual drunkenness. They can't teach anybody. They can't be a pastor being like that. And then I see Ron there, the same guy. I've had a couple of dreams about Ron. Remember that one dream? He was drunk, and I was telling him he needed to repent. And rather than him repent, he went and got in the bed and went to sleep. And I swept out. I swept out his house, and then I put the vacuum on. I mean, this is the sweeping of destruction that's going to come to him. And then I turned the air conditioner on in there. I said, I "Turn this on because it's going to get really hot in here." I mean, he's in big trouble. So anyway, so he was there in the dream. As I'm telling Lisa about these other guys, these these uh, drunken managers, and, my, and I told Lisa, I said, "Yeah, I said, you know, these these are the drunken managers or the." teachers pastors and people supposed to be showing up to do god's work but they're showing up drunk and they can't do that. It's a spiritual drunkenness and i said it's just like i just had this dream the other day of of somebody doing that with you know like with this teacher and so ron was there he heard what i said and he knew i was talking about him he knew it was about him and then he goes no yeah but that's different that's different and i didn't even acknowledge that he was standing there or anything i just let him you know just whatever um, so there's that dream and, uh, which actually that dream, as I'm telling you it, um, just gives me confirmation that Ron has actually seen the video. I tagged him in that video. Um, yeah, I tagged him in that video where I, I did that. So I, that, that shows me he's actually seen that video, which is a good thing. Okay. Then I had another dream. I'm in this room, and um, there's a lot of young... Hey, let me go back to this other dream that I just got done talking about these um, these drunk pastors, drunk managers. Um, so, you know, God is very merciful. These people will be left behind during the Great Tribulation. Um, but in His mercy, these people will be given a chance to repent and uh, to come away from their folly. And some of them will, some of them will not. Like this one uh, manager slash pastor, he was very, um, he was just, he was not fighting me back or anything like that. Um, he was trying to tell me he was okay, but I'm like, no, no. I was really super gentle with him and I'm explaining to him, no, you're, it's really not okay. And so he did listen to me. He, he, he finally listened to me. But that second one, nope. He would not take the correction. He would not take the instruction. And so uh, he's going to be in quite a bit of trouble. This is somebody who's not going to repent. Okay, so some will repent and some will not. But these false pastors out here, the ones who are all filled with uh, lies and deception, pride and arrogance, 
and there's some you know that just intentionally leave the flock astray some of them don't in, maybe intentionally do it but they're still filled with all this pride and arrogance and uh you know they're in trouble so they're going to be left behind during the great tribulation but um you know it's 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 everybody's going to have a choice they're going to have to make you can either make your choice now walk straight with the lord right now swallow all your pride and your arrogance become humble or you will be left behind okay let me continue ladies uh, some children young ladies myself um i can't remember if there were any men in the room let me go back to, let me just pull this back a little bit and uh which actually that dream as i'm telling you it um just gives me confirmation that Ron has actually seen the video. I tagged him in that video. Um, yeah, I tagged him in that video where I, I did that. So I, that, that shows me he's actually seen that video, which is a good thing. Okay, then I had another dream. I'm in this room, and um, there's a lot of young ladies, uh, some children, young ladies, myself, um, I can't remember if there were any men in the room. We were going to, uh, we were all waiting to dance. We were all waiting to do our dance. There was a guy I was supposed to dance with. He was going to be my dance partner. He went and he, this other man, okay, there was a choreographer. This choreographer guy was going to be putting our dance moves together and stuff like that. And I had my own idea about how I wanted to dance, but then I, went back to this guy and I said, yo, it's just best that we let the choreographer um, do our dances. You know, let choreograph our dances. It's best that we allow him to do it. So, um, well, my guy that I was supposed to be dancing with, he's, there's this other guy come walking into the room. He's this white guy. He looks like a He's dressed like this, oh my gosh, like a little spoiled brat. I mean, he's a grown man, but he's, he's just dressed so gaudy. Um, he, really super expensive glasses on, really super expensive, like sunglasses. They're the kind of sunglasses, if you go outside, they'll go dark, but if you're inside, they're clear. They're not dark. They adjust according to going in and outside exceedingly expensive glasses I could just look at him and see it was just money everything he had on was expensive all of his clothes everything his hair was perfect he was just pristine and you know it just reminds me of a Yale University boy so um he came in the room and he was speaking okay so my dance partner went over there to talk to him like they were buddies like they were friends or something and it was really nasty well, I just was disgusted by that, let's just say. And then, um, so, um, the guy that was dressed really expensive, he started saying sp really despicable things. He came in the room, and he was just talking to his the guy friend, but he was just saying really horrible things. And he said, um, what did he say? What's that word? I don't know if he said vagina or if he said, or he th I think he said clitori, clitori is the way he said it. He was just talking about woman's anatomy and he was saying that it was just really perverse on how he was speaking. So I stood up and I went over to him in front of everybody and I said, I said, I'm going to tell you right now the way that you are speaking in front speaking in front of these ladies is unacceptable. You are not allowed to do that. I said, you come walking in here wearing your mom and dad's money, trying to make it look like you're, I mean, I just said so much stuff to him. And the more I spoke, uh, I, I told him everything. I told him about how God, uh, every, every idle word that, ever, that you ever say, I said, you will give an account for it. 
It's all being written down. Every idle word you say will be given account for. Every idle word that every single person in the room ever says will be given an account for. And I was like, you know, you, um, I don't know. I was just going on and on and on about the Lord, um, the fierceness of the Lord, the how he has no, this man has no honor. This man has no, um, he just is in trouble with the way he is, the way his, his lifestyle I was telling about his lifestyle. I, I nailed it. I was telling him all about his lifestyle was in not pleasing to the Lord. I was just telling him everything, everything, everything. And then I said, I said, I have been called to judge and to give the warnings of God almighty. That's what I've done. And then somehow I had the ability. I bent his ear. I bent his ear. Like if you take your fingers and you, Take the top of your ear and the bottom of your ear and you squeeze it together and bend your ear. So I had the ability to be able to bend his ear. But as I'm talking to this man, his demeanor is going from proudness to humbleness. He's going from this elevated, self-elevated person to this guy who's just being deflated and deflated and deflated the more words I'm speaking to him. So then... He goes, he speaks into a microphone. Um, I, I don't know exactly how it is, but he starts speaking and I hear these words. This woman, this woman, she has the power to bend the ear. Because this is right the same time I'm saying I have been called to be a judge, to give God's judgments and to give his warnings. And I, then I, at that time, I'm hearing somebody because then I've been the ear of this person. And then I hear this other, this, this person, this man speaking on a microphone really loud. She has the power to bend the ear. Let me interject here. There's scripture about bending the ear. You could look that up to get the, um, I'm, I don't, I don't have the ability to look it up right now because I'm using my phone to record, but uh, bending the ear is uh, listening, basically listening to what Jesus has to say. And, you know, basically listening to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, I'm just like majorly paraphrasing because I know that is not how, the, you know, that is not word for word of the scripture. But you could actually uh, Google that, you know, the bending of the ear in the Bible. And you can get a, a, a deeper interpretation of that. Yeah. So I'm like, oh man, okay, so that's it for the dream. Um, so I I don't know, man, that's a lot of dreams, isn't it? But anyway, it's showing, okay, so these things are all about, okay, so the first dream is about being left behind, me, me being here, uh, taking care of these children, you know, like the kids are left behind and I come back, I take care of the kids and I place a yoke upon them. I make them eat the yolk. They're going, just like the Bible scripture says, oh, you know, I give you my cup to drink. You say you will not drink, but I tell you, you shall drink my cup of wrath, okay, of judgment, of a portion of judgment. And that's what these children will have to eat it. But it's also, don't forget, like, you know, the Bible scripture that I read, it's also about coming to Jesus Christ too, for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Okay, so it's a it's a double thing here because these children will be left behind. Anybody who gets left behind, it's not going to be an easy road. You think walking a narrow road is hard now? Imagine how much harder it's going to be during the Great Tribulation. Uh, there's going to be horrific things that are unleashed upon this earth at that time. Men's hearts shall fail them for what they see is coming upon this earth. So being left behind is going to be no joke. No joke at all. That's what the yoke represents. Me being called Ann Jones, that means grace, and it means God has favored me. I've been called to give his judgments, to lay out his judgments, and to give his warnings during the Great Tribulation. So in the dream, um, I knew I was up next. I was called, and I had to wait for these other people that were standing in the way. They were all standing in the way. Uh, they're going to have to be removed and get taken out of the way. And when the, and when that happens, when this transformation happens, it'll be time for God's um, people that are going to be sent back 
during the Great Tribulation, okay? It'll be our time to step up. It'll be our time to bring people to Jesus Christ because I guarantee you this. There's going to be so many people, the Bible's very clear, an innumerable multitude will wash their robes white during the Great Tribulation. They will be begging to walk right at that time. They will be begging for Jesus. There's so many right now that don't care about him. They don't uh, give an ear to anything he has to say. Uh, they don't want to hear about it. They want to live their lives. But I guarantee you, uh, an innumerable multitude, like the Bible says, will, will come to him and wash the robes right during the Great Tribulation. They will be begging for that chance. And me being called Ann Jones, like I knew I was up next. That means transformation. It's time to be the 144. It's time to go into action. It's time to do it. Then uh, the other dream uh, with, you know, correcting the uh, drunken pastors, the drunk, well, the drunken managers. This is during the Great Tribulation. This is what we'll do. Some will be humbled. Some will listen to the correction. And some, like the other manager, will be arrogant and prideful. They will be given no mercy. I won't have any mercy towards them. The ones who want to be humble, I will give mercy to them. I'll be gentle and kind. But the other one, being obnoxious and not humbling himself, he's he's going to have a really hard time. And then, uh, of course, the last scene of the last dream, uh, that's pretty self-explanatory as well. Um you know, that's during great tribulation and correcting that guy. And he also repented. And that was so lovely to see him do it too. It was so lovely to see this guy go from this really high self-elevated person to somebody who just had humbled themselves and then had the true understanding, you know, about the righteousness and holiness of God and having a fear of the Lord and, you know, everything. So anyway, my night was packed with dreams. I woke up at four o'clock and Okay, so, so that's it for the dreams that I had the other day. Uh, I woke up from a dream this morning, and I'm just going to just tell you the just of the dream. The just the, the the bare facts of the dream is this: the the church has the the world, which Satan, and the church has deceived many people. They have. Uh, let everybody know and think that being a homosexual is okay with the Lord. And I'm here to tell you right now that that is a lie straight from the pits of hell. If you go into 2 Corinthians, uh, do your own research on this, you know, and go into 2 Corinthians, and you're going to clearly see where the Bible gives a list of things that cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. I'm paraphrasing, but no liar immoral person, murderer, adulterer, fornicator, the effeminate or homosexual. Effeminate means homosexual. Uh, drunkard, gossiper, cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Second Corinthians very clearly says that. But for some reason, the church and the, and of course, Satan, the world, uh, they want to sit there and push the agenda of it's okay. You know, you can't help it. This is the way you're born and it's love. <clears throat> it's love. So it can't be wrong. But let me just assure you this. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He does not change according to people's feelings. God does not change his requirements According to, according to the whims of the world and how people progress, their thoughts progress. They think this church and this world has has taught people that oh we've we've just progressed. It's not the way it used to be, where this was a a bad thing. No, it's beautiful. It's love. No, I'm telling you right now, you've been lied to. If you are a homosexual, or if you are someone who is struggling with that, I'm telling you right now. If the rapture happens, you're still in that. I'm telling you right now, it's a fact. You will be left behind. And if you die in that, you will go straight to hell. I'm telling you the truth. Um, that's just the bottom line about it. And if you're left here during the Great Tribulation, that demon or demons that you have, you will have to be delivered of those things. This is not just a sin. This is a demon of homosexuality. It's a demon.
Okay? So, all right. I've given you all of the uh, things that I was given to share this morning. So, uh, God bless you. God bless your family. God bless your animals on this day. Goodbye.